So we've arrived in Skagway. Just kind of a walk into town. But as you come off the ship and walk along the port, you get all this graffiti on the wall. So it's cruise ships, <laughs> a lot of cruise ships. Sent some staff up there to write the name Volendam, Carnival Legend, Fair Princess. Thank you, truck, Norwegian Bliss, Westerdam. So there we go, they've all gone up there, someone's had to write their name on the, on the rock. There's the Zyder Dam on the historic waterfront at Skagway. Past to the Yukon Gold. And the sun's coming out, pretty chilly. But we've got some great views. So I've walked about a quarter mile from the ship at the dock and we've come across a campsite. There's one big RV here, so I have to bring Raymond or Smurf down here. Then pretty cool place. Mountains in the background. Buses going past very infrequently. and plenty of sunshine. I don't know how much it costs, but there's a little hut there, and facilities block just over there. Nice little spot, plenty of fresh air. Gateway to the Klondike. Get your gold here. And if you want to come here and go up on the train to the gold panning, you've got the White Pass train. I'm just going to get across before it comes across. I'll show the carriages. There you got some cute little carriages. Lake Moose. There we go, We're just coming into town now. Get your Gold Rush gifts here. Skagway Mining Company. Diamonds. I don't think they would have found diamonds here. People just sitting on the street like they would have done in the old days. And on this side you got the trains. The Yukon route. The oldie train shoppy. There you are, the liquor store. No horses, just cars tied up. Hey, this is just like the Wild West. Red Onion Saloon. Diamond Gallery. This is the main street. Hotels, Golden North Hotel, sort of yellowy. But this place is worth a look at. Camp Skagway, number one, 1899. So they've stuck wood, lots of driftwood has been stuck to the front of that building. That's something else. Another, another avenue with the mountains in the background. <laughs> and I guess but these places have been open for a hundred or so years. So raised sidewalk so you don't get caught up in all the blood and 
the way the fighting has gone on. There you go, Main Street in Skagway. It's like it was back in the day. A nice little building down a side street. Skagway Brewing Company. Rooms for rent upstairs. More old fashioned looking buildings. There's a nice old building from way back when. I'll have a look around the other side. Looks like it's been badly damaged by fire. It's boarded up, there are no doors, but there is a sign. Freibrunn Warehouse, recycling old buildings. Yeah, so this was first used as a building in 1891 as a slaughterhouse and then an ice house. And then it was moved to here as part of this museum. Captain William Moore came here, started mapping this area, set a route for the gold diggers. It originally was called Mooresville and then after, after a stampede of lots of people looking for gold they changed the name to ultimately Skagway. So various buildings in this little plot so the Moores family started in 1880s and it was shortly after that the town grew and this was restored in the 1970s and 80s Let's have a look, see if we can get in. There you are, see the mud in the road? That's where you have the wooden sidewalks. So Captain Mil William Moore was born in Germany. <laughs> Not what I thought. He was into railroads, he had ships, the Royal Dutchman. Oh, and apparently he wasn't a real captain. He was just named that because of his uh, sailing experience and ship experience. So just a recreation of the front room, what it would have looked like. And there we go, the office. All the money is counted. Fox pelts. Even some wardrobes. There you are, every good house has its facilities. Uh, another nice shed in the garden. Probably a man shed. Well, I know I've got a lumber yard just in front of me, and there's a generator making a whole heap of noise. But just had to take a video of the mountains now the clouds have cleared. It's gorgeous here. So this was Captain William Moore's first cabin in 1887. And then the house was started about 20 years later. Unfortunately you can't get in it. It's basically just a couple of rooms. That gorgeous little house. Just more of the town. See, we're coming to the end of the shops at this street. As you see, it goes on. It's got to be another half a mile. Go down it a little way. So, Wells Fargo, Bank of Alaska. And the US Post Office. So I think we're coming to a bit towards the old town here. A few bars, people sitting outside like they probably did. 
I'm going to get run over by a bike. It's got hills and mountains. Just looking at these buildings across the road, and they look like fake fronts, some sort of movie set. <laughs> Just can't believe the day. These views are incredible. Love this town. There you go, I've walked down this street, State Street, and just the right hand side. Someone gave me a funny look. RV Park and Laundromat. Got all that, hard standing, electric points, loads of them, and it's not open. And it's got its own laundromat. Yeah, closed on the door. Maybe you could just camp here off grid. Good place to do it. So we've come to the end of town. We probably walked about two miles from the port and there's a railway uh, ending here uh, which says White Pass on Yukon and Yukon route. So really up there is where the, all the people came 120 years ago for the gold rush. And somewhere along here, we're hoping to find uh, the Gold Rush Cemetery. In the meantime, I'll keep having to take pictures of views. Straight roads and views. Awesome. So we're just walking a bit further on from the railroad sidings. And I just look back. Take it in. So we're walking, we're way out of town now. Along the edge of the railroad, down the valley, which we've seen signs for was the tsunami escape route. So we last sign was half a mile back. Just been a well, hadn't just been, but there is evidence of a crazy landslide here. That's steep. Still walking. This would have been the route from the town that the gold prospectors would have taken up into the hills before the railroad and the roads across the ice fields. And I reckon the the ones that didn't make it would have been bought, brought back and uh, just in front of me is the Gold Rush Cemetery so I think that's where they would have put them rather than bring them another couple of miles to town so we're going to find out in a minute and I think there's a train coming Back from gold panning. The White Pass train. <laughs> They're all waving. They got wave back. Well, how much gold they found? That's cool. And off they go into the sun. And a and a hoot to boot. So, we've arrived at Gold Rush Cemetery, two miles from town. So the first burial occurred here in early 1898. With the exception of two families, the cemetery was no longer used after 1908. 
and 133 grave sites have been located here, but burial records are available for only 60 of these. So just give some names of some of the people. At the front we've got Jefferson R. Smith, died July 8th, 1898. Jefferson Randolph, Soapy Smith, King of the Frontier Conmen, was killed in the much publicised shootout with Frank Reed on July 8th, 1898. And then underneath, we've got the aforementioned Frank Reed. He gave his life for the honour of Skagway. That's what's inscribed on his granite monument. The bullet fired by Soapy's rifle during the shootout left Reed mortally wounded. And after 12 agonising days in hospital, Reed died from the gunshot wound. He is heralded even today as one of Skagway's heroes, Frank H. Reed. Here's the first couple of graves, Martin Itjen and Lucy Itjen. With a big lump of gold behind it, which is chained down to a tree, so you can't take that. Clara Amelia Patton. Born 1875, died 1904. Jefferson R. Smith. He was the con man in Skagway. And here we have the cross in the middle, Frank P. Reed, age 23, he died in the shootout. So that's quite something, seeing all those gravestones. And this might well have been a trail up into the gold fields, but there's some falls. Lower Reed Falls, possibly named after Frank P. Reed, the hero who shot the con man. Well, I didn't expect this. Walked up the valley from the cemetery. May well have been the route into the gold field. Who knows? Anyway, what it now is, is Lower Reed Falls. There's a cave in there. I'm not going in. Might be in the route through, you never know. Might be where a bear is. path down from the falls. Back to 
towards the cemetery. Through the woods. So just sat down before a two mile hike back to town. And I think I'll stay here for a few minutes watching the views. Love these wooden sidewalks. Just a Saturday afternoon in Skagway. Heading back to the ship. Not much going on. Here's a truck. I thought it was from Back to the Future, but I think it's a snowplow truck. Yeah, beats Land's End. Just a few of the railroad buildings on the track. White Pass on Yukon Route Station. So just heading back to the boat. Thought Skagway was ace. Well worth a visit if you pass in. Especially when it's like this, May the 7th or 8th, it's Saturday at the moment and uh, it's gorgeous out, fresh but clean air. Anyway, back for a cup of tea and uh, a swim and I'll catch you on the next one. All the best. <laughs>